So yeah, Mindplex has officially shut down. Or did it? I know what you're thinking. How is this possible? How could they have not shut down? First, we need to take a look back all the way to 2013, when Mindplex opened its server. Let me draw the scene in your head. The only multiplayer servers back then only had an average of 100 players in games Fractions, Townie, MCMMO, Creative, and Survival. All games that are unheard of on today's Minecraft servers. And from what I've heard, they all seem to be copycats of each other. It was time for a change, and that's where Mindplex comes into play, promising to be different than anything seen before, and with new games Castle Siege and Bridges, which are both fast-paced PvP games. Sounds sort of like what we have today, right? But that was just one of the things Mindplex did to help them reach their popularity. After this, on July 6, 2013, they partnered with Better MC, a server whom you've probably never heard of, which had games such as Dominant, Clans, which was actually recreated in Mindplex, and Minecart, which was added to Mindplex after the merge, but was removed in 2013. This merge helped Mindplex lead what was known as the Arcade Meta between 2013 and 2015, which sparked curiosity in arcade game modes and ultimately helped shape Mindplex into what it is, or was. Other servers in this time period, such as Hive, Hypixel, and Mindcade, were also doing quite well and are close competitors with Mindplex, especially Hypixel, but Mindplex still dominating all the rest with players, originality, and a higher quality standard than the rest. There's no doubt what Mindplex did inspired all the others to do similar, or in some cases, the exact same thing Mindplex was doing. And with more and more choices, Mindplex would need to do something if they wanted to remain on top. So they released their biggest game mode, and quite possibly the biggest game mode of all time. Survival games. Now you're probably like, wait, what? Mindplex invented survival games? No, no they did not. The MCSG network did. Now, if you're like me, you've never heard of MCSG. That's because one, they invented survival games in 2012 before Mindplex, and number two, they shut down in 2016, which means most modern players of this day and age had never played or heard of this server at all. Also, what's even funnier is after they died and shut down, they tried to reopen, but shut down after a few months. Oof. <laughs> After Mindplex made survival games big, other servers copied them, including Hive. And as a Hive YouTuber, I hate to say that. But the thing is, no matter how hard the others tried, they couldn't compete. Mindplex had simply done it right. The result? Thousands of players playing every day, leading to large player counts and YouTubers such as DanTDM and Captain Sparkles making tons of videos on survival games. Captain Sparkles actually becoming a partner on their leadership team, mostly giving feedback but also working alongside them as they developed more and more games. By this time, they had definitely secured their spot as the biggest Minecraft server of all time. So, what went wrong? Well, a lot of things. First, an interest in arcade-based game modes isn't going to last forever. People are getting tired of the same old games every same old day. That's where the PvP era, or meta, started to take effect, starting in 2015 all the way to present day, with games such as Sky Wars, Bed Wars, and Treasure Wars all starting to come into play. But first, we need to take a step back to June of 2015. Remember when I mentioned Hypixel? Well, here's where they really start coming into the picture, rivaling Mindplex like a 1v1. Put yourself in Hypixel's shoes. Like any company, Hypixel wanted to win against its competitor, and they would get their wish, but it would take a while. On June 14th, 2015, they started exploding with their release of Sky Wars. You've probably heard of it, as it's on pretty much every server in some form or fashion. The result was the same as Mindplex's and couldn't have come at a better time as during that time period Mindplex's innovation, which everyone knew and loved, had stopped. Growth had slowed and craziness had formed when a change in their leadership team had started. Now, as Mindplex's survival games, Skywars was not an original idea, but it was the way they implemented it that made it dominate any other variant. And I guess they implemented it right because it provided exactly what the community wanted and is why we still play today. Skywars was only the start of Hypixel's domination above the rest. By 2017, Hypixel had dominated the rest, leaving Mindplex pretty much in the dust. And their key to success is no secret. They take something people already want or have and make it better. Kinda like how a car today is better than a car from 10 or 20 years ago and appeals to more people than the older model. This is easy to see in Bed Wars. Even though they didn't invent it, it still appealed to the Egg Wars community, duels for the 1v1ers, and Skyplock for the MMORPG community. Another thing they did was have the game appeal to the different categories of people inside that community. Like Bed Wars, if you're into solo, you can play that. Duos, yep, trios, squads, and more for each person in that community. Another thing they do is lure people into the game with level ups, titles, grinding for the top spot on the leaderboard, and the list goes on and on. But what was Mindplex doing to top all this? Well, nothing. Here's where we start to get into more present day, with Mindplex being sort of ignorant to the PvP meta and continuing to add all sorts of arcade style games that people weren't into anymore. 
Later, Mindplex did open their eyes and tried to create some PvP game modes, but unfortunately, it really wasn't that thing, as all their PvP game modes fell far behind at what Hypixel was offering with all the benefits of playing that I mentioned earlier. Mindplex was lacking all this, meaning there really wasn't a benefit to play. And not to mention, one of their games, Gladiator, was limited to only 1v1, meaning it was only appealing to that one category of people and kind of forgetting the rest of the community. This issue plagued all of their game modes, causing you not to earn anything, and better yet, not giving you a reason to play. So most just went to Hypixel. One more thing they were doing wrong was with their currency. Hypixel has a separate currency for each game mode, while Mindplex only has one. On Hypixel, if you want something new on a game mode, you have to earn enough money to play it, which means grinding and winning to earn it. On Mindplex though, you can play any game mode to earn currency for something in another game mode. Now that sounds great, and you're probably like, but why would Hypixels be better? Well, it makes them much less exclusive to the game mode, practically killing all the challenge in grinding that game mode. That, mixed with the fact that there isn't much you can buy on Mindplex and what you can buy wouldn't really give enough an advantage to be worth it, you just have a ton of money and nothing to spend it on. Another issue Mindplex had was that they really didn't care or see trends when they appeared. Maybe if they had seen him, they'd still be around today, right? Wrong. Here's where things get juicy. We all know by now Mindplex has shut down, but if you don't know the server story, basically players stopped being able to log onto the Java server and as anyone would, they just thought they were fixing bugs. But they weren't, and their Bedrock server completely disappeared from the featured server list. By this point, people knew something was wrong, with people such as myself suspecting the worst. And it was that they had shut down secretly. But as you'd expect, that's not all that happened. Before shutting down, a group of people on the Mindplex team started working on a recode, which is what the server needed as no updates were pushed out for quite a long time. Also, a new but not so new game mode, Death Run, was added. Things were looking good, but unfortunately, no they weren't. It was buggy, and since we're still in the PvP meta, people did not care about Death Run. So is that why they shut down? No, and things get deeper. The owners of the server literally stopped paying their employees. How are you going to run a company without paying your employees? Many of the employees left, as anyone would, and the remaining workers, most of whom not even being able to contact the owners. What's even crazier is there was only one person working on the new infrastructure, Alex the Coder. And when Mindplex shut down, even he wasn't told anything about this and was just as clueless as we all were when it happened. Three days passed, with both Java, Bedrock, and the website being down and no one knowing what was going on. Then, one of the two players who the owner still communicated with broke the news on Discord. I'm not going to read the full message, but here are the highlights. He says he's unfortunately been given the burden of informing us that the closure we thought was temporary was going to be forever. He also sounds pretty ashamed of the owners, as he says that he shouldn't be the one to tell us this. He shouldn't have to. And he's completely right. He should never be responsible for this sort of thing. And all I have to say is, shame on you owners. He goes on to mention how he wishes there's more to say about it, and like all of us, wishes that it would have gone differently and wishes we would have all been able to give it a proper send-off. I never played Mindplex, but I would have definitely been there to say goodbye and record the final moments. One more thing he mentions is that not even Microsoft was informed about their closing, and it seems that one of the owners, Strut20, just shut down everything without telling him or anyone else. And with that, my friends, Mindplex is gone. Oh well, see you next time. Bye! If you actually thought the video's over, you were wrong. But the main question is, why? Why not tell us? Did something go wrong with the infrastructure that Alex the Coder isn't telling us? Why shut down your still pretty successful Bedrock server? Why? The answer is simple. The owners didn't care. As Dean states in his message, the team was never respected. Mix that with the fact that the owners only talked to two people and ignoring all the rest of the employees on top of the fact that they wouldn't pay them, it sounds a lot more than we decided to close the servers. Even though I didn't play the server, I'm still mad that the owners won't even say thanks to the players for playing the game for 10 years. Apparently the owners also decided to stop paying to host the servers as well, which just goes to show how little care they had for the server. If we take a look at the Mr. Epics video, he reached out to Gyro Ninja, who said he was the only one working on the Bedrock server since August of 2020 and was the reason it was still running. He also goes on to mention how he stopped being paid on October 4th of 2022. Now if all this wasn't crazy enough, Mindplex was over 40,000 US dollars in debt to hosting providers. Now unfortunately, we aren't sure if this is true, but it's definitely a possibility. Mindplex isn't going to be gone forever. 
A former YouTuber named Tomito tweeted that he had acquired 100% of Mindplex, which is great news for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives people like me, who never had a chance to experience Mindplex, a chance to do just that. Two, it enables old players and YouTubers to return. Three, it allows more game modes to be added to Mindplex by its new team. Four, a guy like Tomito is just what the server needed long ago. The only downside is that it could take a while, but I definitely think Samito can do it. Listen to this clip from Samito. All right, guys. Obviously, crazy day today. Um, I want to start out by saying, you know, thank you guys so much to the Mindplex community. You guys are still rallying strong after all of these years, and I've known you guys for 10. It's been since day one with me, and this is kind of why I wanted to step in. I knew you guys were still out there. I knew you still wanted to see the network succeed. And so did I, man. There's so much potential here. There, there's so many good things that this network has done for so many great people. They've, it started my career, right? From day one, I was fortunate enough to just happen upon the server right before it was founded and play better MC and play champions. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what led to my career at Overwatch. It's what's led to so many amazing things in my life and amazing people in my life. And it just deserves so much. It deserves the world. And that's really because the community that you all built right and, and and you guys are awesome so thank you so much but let, let me let me get something clear real quick you know there's nothing for us to celebrate yet right like the, the mentality when i said the mentality around this company has changed. hopefully we've reached back out to microsoft to hopefully get back um in the partnership program with with bedrock and so you know i'm really hoping that you know I, I, they're, they're great over there i'm really hoping to hear back from them soon and We'll keep you guys posted as soon as we can. And I've got a lot of game design ideas ready to implement. You know, I'm excited about those too. So this is my dream, man. And, and you guys are going to make it happen. So I love you. Thank you. So yeah, he definitely has the right mindset, especially in saying that we can't celebrate yet since nothing has been accomplished. As you heard, he also said that he had new game ideas and he seems really determined to make it happen, which is great. And it really turns this crazy tale around. And I definitely think Mindplex will dominate if things continue going the way they are right now. Thank you all so much for watching. Do you think this will be Mindplex's comeback? I'm excited to see and I hope you'll join me on this journey. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hey, did you see? Mindplex closed its server and didn't even say thank you for playing. That smoky smell is me, sister, because I am burned up. Before shutting down, a group of server on the people.